The reasons people struggle in this business, in my opinion, can be boiled down to three basic things. Number one, they have their expectations too high, too early. You know, I get asked when people come to me about being an agent at Reclan, hey, Pat, what can I expect, you know, my first year or two years in, in commissions? Or, hey, when can I quit my uh, day job and do this full time? Hey, when can I start making a lot of money in this business so that this is all I do? Well, I temper their expectations quite a bit when they ask me that by telling them, hey, it's going to be a slow, hard grind. Because in reality, it typically is. Now, hey, I have seen where people come along and they just right out of the chute start doing great and they're off to the races and never look back. But folks, that's the exception, not the rule in this business. Most people are going to be, it's going to be a long, slow process that kind of gets going, gets a little momentum, and if they keep doing the right things the right way consistently, then it launches into what can be a full-time business. I tell them to really back off on that, hey, I want to go full-time next month, because in reality, that may not happen. Here's the general advice I give. When asked when they can start doing this full-time, I always say this, when you've got two full-time jobs. And what I mean by that is, if you've got a day job that what you're currently doing now, and then you get into the real estate business as a separate side hustle, and you really want to pursue real estate, fine, go at it. Work that day job. You gotta have something to pay your bills and you work your real estate business. And if you're good at it, and if you do the right things the right way long enough, eventually, you end up with two full-time jobs. You've got your day job and you've got a real estate business that's really booming and, and thriving on the side. And you've got two full-time jobs here and something's got to give. You've got more to do than you can get done. Family is suffering. You're not making it to nearly as many of your daughter's softball games as you used to. You just got too much going on. You've got to choose something. What I tell people is you've got options. You can choose to back off on one or the other and, and get your life in the balance that you want it to be in. And it may be you give up your day job and you're in real estate full time, or it may be you back off on the real estate a little bit because you love your day job. And I have guys that, that have done both and done both well. When you get to that point that you have done the right things long enough and hard enough, and you've been consistent and you've got two full-time jobs, that's a great place to be because you've got choices, options. You can then make the decisions that's best for you and your family and decide which way you want to go. But to completely abandon the day job and jump off into the rural real estate business and say, man, I'm going to blow this out of the water. You, you could be setting yourself up for some uh, disappointment. Keep your expectations tempered until you get things going and you see kind of what's going on. Don't set your expectations too high, too early. Hey, the second biggest mistake I see agents make is they don't follow up. Now, I know there's probably a lot of cool, catchy, trendy real estate coach ways of saying that, but it all boils down to the fact some real estate people, in fact, a lot of them are just lazy. They will not follow up. And it's for a variety of reasons. Some people just aren't organized. Some people want to, you know, work a very select chunk of hours on these days only and anything outside of that little chunk they just blow off. Other, other people just are, are always looking for the big deal and they won't follow up on things that they deem or determine as, as minor or insignificant. And the thing is, you just really don't know. Real estate agents who don't follow up routinely, regularly, consistently, professionally, they're going to struggle and fail. There are too many real estate agents out there. There are too many land businesses and land agents and land brokers for people to choose from for them to just tolerate you not following up, you not doing what you said, you not responding in a timely way. Now, let me put a little caveat there. I've been in this business long enough, dealing with the public, dealing with customers. So I know there are some customers, some clients that you just can't please. <laughs> you just can't. You know it, I know it. And that's kind of, you know, it's, you're not supposed to say that. The customer's always right. No, they're not. Some of the customers are just flat out wrong and you need to cut ties with them and let them go find happiness somewhere else. But for the most part, the problem lies with us, not the customers or clients. There are a few that just are too demanding and want too much, want more than you and I can deliver. 
but they're the exception, not the rule. The rule is you and I need to be better at following up. When we get an email lead, we need to deal with it. When we get a phone call or a text, somebody calling the office, we need to follow up as quickly as we can. Listen to me, especially if you're new. If you're new and growing and hungry in this business, you need to take every little nibble as the potential whale on the end of the hook. You need to follow up like it is the last customer on earth, like it is the biggest deal in the world because you never know, it could very well be your biggest deal. It could very well be the door that opens that leads you into a whole new direction um, in business and makes all the difference in the world. When you're young and growing and hungry, you got to follow up. Now, there's going to come a time when your business growing and moving and thriving that you might can be a little choosier in the kind of business you want and you follow up with. But until you're at the point you can't keep up with all of it, you are not too busy to follow up in a professional, timely way. Biggest mistake I see agents make is they just won't follow up because they're lazy, they've got a bad understanding of what customer service is, or they just think they're too big to follow up with something they think is a minor deal, but it'll hurt you, it won't help you. Third thing that I see young or newer agents doing, especially in the world that we live in today with these devices that I'm filming on right here, uh, in the world of the internet and the, the social apps that run on top of the internet, Biggest mistake I see people make is they spend too much time selling, not branding. They use these devices, they use the internet, they use all these social platforms as nothing more than just electronic classified ads. That's gonna hurt you. Now there's a place for that. I use the internet, I use social media, I use lots of things like this to advertise and push the sale of our listings, I really do. There's a place for that here. You don't use these devices. You don't use these apps strictly for selling. If you use social media apps, try to shift your focus away from pushing your listings and pushing your services and do more branding. Talk about who you are. Talk about the things that are interesting in the work that you're doing. Do more educating, informing, revealing what you're doing instead of always trying to sell something. People are going through their phones like this, scrolling as fast as they can. When they see something that's just another sales pitch, they just keep on scrolling. And I know every once in a while somebody will stop and look because they know you or something may just pop out interesting. But when they keep seeing sale after sales after sales, all you're doing is promoting sales and call me, call me, call me. Here, here I am ready, spend your money with me. They get burned out in a hurry. Use your social media accounts to promote the interesting things about what you do. Talk about things that are informational, educational, entertaining about your business. You'll get more social attention that way. And then when somebody gets ready to buy something or to sell something, you may be the person that's top of mind. You may then be the person they remember because they know you like you and trust you that they'll then contact to sell their property or to use you to help them buy a property. Folks, look at it like this, just back way up. I know we're in the sales business and this is how we make our living is doing deals, but we're not selling a gallon of milk. It's $4 a gallon and people buy, two, buy it two or three times a week. We're not doing that. We're selling things that cost a lot of money and it only happens a few times in a lifetime for most people. It happens maybe once in a lifetime for people. So you constantly selling is not gonna make them ready to use you. They're only gonna be ready when they get good and ready. So your goal is not to sell, your goal is to be known, liked, and trusted so that when they get ready, you're the person with people that they come to to do business with. Let me put a little caveat on that. Yeah, you and I, we're gonna sell on these devices, but we need to make it the, the exception, not the rule. We may have 50 posts and one of them is about a listing. The other 49 are, are trying to grow equity in the minds and lives of the people that follow us on social media, where we're always giving information. Build up equity that way. People know you like you, trust you. And then every once in a while you come along and say, hey folks, 
hey, I need you to do something for me now. The one in 50, you're asking. Well, people are more prone to do something for you when you have been going out of your way, post after post after post, week after week after week, giving stuff with no expect expectations of anything in return. You're giving away stuff. Now you come along and ask for something? Most people are going to be reasonable and at least give it the attention. No, they might not be ready to buy or sell, but at least they will entertain what you're asking of them. Spend a lot more time on that. There's so many different angles and nuances and, and strategies uh, and tactics. But the bottom line is brand don't sell. Give with expectation of nothing in return. People give up because it, they don't see instant results. You can't put out three posts and, so, and your phone's not ringing off the hook and then you go, oh, it doesn't work. You don't know, you hadn't tried it. You put out three posts, you put out 30 posts, you put out posts for two years, three years. You haven't tried it until you have done it consistently. Day in, day out on a regular basis on multiple platforms for years, giving without expecting anything in return. Until you've done that, you can't tell me that it doesn't work because I have done that and I have seen it work. Now, I made all the mistakes on the front end where I use social platforms as nothing but electronic classified ads. Made all those mistakes, wasted all that time. Wasn't until I realized that I need to give, that I need to brand before I started seeing results. And then it still took a lot of time.